Hi, Professor Maxwell. Today, Oliver Brett Weister and I will be reflecting on the facts of Case 8-5, Audit of the Friars for Life. I will be covering question one, and Oliver will be presenting questions two and three. In, for question number one, the best descriptive words for Davis Norris's leadership style include lenient, sort of anti-utilitarianist, egoistic, and impulsive. In terms of leniency, Norris is the manager on the Friars for Life audit and has a strict code of conduct to not provide additional consulting services, to be unbiased in terms of accounting practices, and should be providing his best possible efforts to protect the interests of auditors, businesses, and the public. He has disregarded each one of these factors in consulting and allowing FFL to continue questionable revenue accounting practices, acting in the best interests of himself, and allowing false financials to enter the public eye. He reasoned that this will he, he will let this accounting slide and it was temporary for the year. The, the situation presented in the case has samples of egoism or the drive to maintain and enhance favorable views on oneself. His leniency in this case is based on his self-interest to allow the revenue recognition of $1 million so that FFL doesn't pull out of the audit. If they were to pull out of the audit, his decision making would most likely be blamed for the cancellation. I use the descriptive word impulsive for one reason. Norris engaged in a romantic relationship with one of his colleagues, in this case, Lindsay Faro. She was fired by Norris following the end of their relationship. It is Norris's duty as an auditor to remain unbiased in all aspects of the audit, and he lacked judgment when the relationship started and acted impuls impulsively firing Faro. These actions are detrimental to the team and for keeping a neutral bias on this audit. And now I will hand it off to all. Hi, so I will be question, recovering questions two and three. And the second question was, do you consider the decisions made by Nor Norris dysfunctional audit behavior? And I think I have a couple of points on this. I think that the January 12th, 2019 transaction, it should not be recorded as revenue for 2018, which would be considered a dysfunctional audit practice because the transaction is scheduled to take place at a later date since FFL has not delivered the food to Ocean State Health, and as opposed to possibly running into future problems down the road, Norris should have notified the client that the one million cannot be recorded as revenue and made sure during the meeting on January 4th, or they have to ensure that um, on that meeting, if he wants to make sure they're doing everything by the book, that they're not allowing that dysfunctional practice to occur. And then second point, by not uh, forcing FFL to take the write down on the fixed assets for the 100 grand. This is considered dysfunctional audit behavior because the um, the fair value of their assets has increased up to that point and it could be significantly higher, which would be false presented in their state in their financial statements later if they didn't if they failed to correct this. So this would ultimately be a um, this would be a dysfunctional audit practice as well if they decided to not write down those assets because the fair value could have um it could have it could have decreased significantly it could have increased or decreased significantly just to ensure that they're doing everything by the book and then for my third point what um alan moore should do once he learns about these issues i think alan should do a couple of things to start um he should ensure that that january 12th transaction is not recorded as revenue for 2018 and they need to leave that in unearned revenue for FFL. And then Morse should look into why Farrow was impulsively fired. She may have been fired simply out of spite by Norris, and it could be wrong to have let her go for personal reasons rather than professional critique. And lastly, I think Morse should force FFL to take that write down on their fixed assets for year ended December 31st, 2018. Since the real fair market value of their assets has actually decreased at that point in time, and they want to ensure they and they want to ensure that they're moving forward um, with the audit in the correct and legal way to avoid presenting falsified financials in the future, this will ensure trust and reliability amongst the company, its upper management, as well as its relationships with other investors and the public.